Hello and welcome back to more Pokemon Sun and Moon How To Competitive. This episode is the Hyper Training episode. So, it's been a while coming, a lot of you probably have figured this out by now, but I'm gonna go over all the basics that you need to know about Hyper Training, because now I finally have two level 100 Pokemon that would be excellent specimens. I have both my Tapu Lele and my Tapu Bulu, um, which are part of a VGC set that I have and I've used a little bit before, but I was waiting to get them to level 100 so I could hyper train them. Um, as you can see, Tapu Lele is almost perfect. It's It has four perfect IVs, but I don't even need to increase attack because I don't need physical attack at all. So I really only need to raise Tapu Lele's defense. And on Holy Cow, you can see three perfect IVs, but we need all of those other three stats to be perfect, otherwise we're just not going to cut it. As you may or may not know, all legendary Pokemon and Ultra Beasts, and I also believe Gift Pokemon, or maybe just the Type Null, are guaranteed to have three perfect IV stats, but uh, you could get lucky and get four perfect IVs, or you could get meh like this with Tapu Bulu, but Tapu Bulu gave me such a hard time trying to catch it that I was just satisfi satisfied to have an adamant one. Anyway, we're gonna go over hyper training. Um, an example of what a stat will look like when it's hyper trained, if you look at my Alolan Marowak here in the defense and HP, I did hyper train those two stats, so that is what you see right there. It doesn't show best, it shows hyper trained, so you know the difference um, on whether those hyper trained stats, those are hyper trained stats, so you know whether or not they'd be passed down. In case you did not know, Hyper Training, it does technically raise your IVs, but you can't pass them down. It basically raises your stat to what it would have been with perfect IVs, if that makes any sense. Um, so, you can't pass them down through breeding, unfortunately, but that would kind of be broken now, wouldn't it? Anyway, first thing you need are Pokemon at level 100, which you can, you're gonna, it's a grind fest, you're just gonna have to do it that way. There's different tricks, like if you own both versions of the game, you can trade it over for boosted experience, combine that with Pokemon Refresh, and also, uh, combine it with the Lucky Egg, and then just take on the Elite Four a hundred times, that's, uh, pretty much what it is taking on the Elite Four over and over again. Now, really quick, I'm gonna head over here because the next thing you're gonna need are bottle caps. And there are various different ways you can get bottle caps. Um, you can find a few of them just as you play through the main story of the game, but there are pretty few and far between. I'm gonna show you one or two methods. Did I, uh, did I skip over my repel? I think I, oh, no, there it is. I just wanna repel just to go through this one little patch of grass right here and show you. One way that you can get bottle caps is through fishing. In uh, fishing spots, not here. On this island, only on um, Pony Island, can you potentially get bottle caps through fishing. But if you've noticed, you can fish in fishing spots, and I'm gonna run into a Pokemon instead. If you go into these fishing spots, you can occasionally get, can occasionally get some items. Usually things like pearls or pearl strings or I think a star piece, maybe. Just things that you can sell, but if you if you uh, fish in this particular spot on Pony Island, you can sometimes, sometimes very rarely, find a bottle cap. Now, a bottle cap will allow you to hyper train one stat. If you happen to have a gold bottle cap, that will allow you to hyper train all stats. I would reserve those, since bottle caps are actually not too bad to come by. So, method number two, which is the method I have been using for the most part, I've been doing this over the course of several, several days to, uh, basically since, since I've beaten the game. You can go into here, into Isle of Fun, on the exploration paths, and in fact, my Pokemon are on expedition, but I'm gonna go ahead and call them back just so you can see what it's like. So we're gonna go into here, you, you actually don't need to have Isle of Fun upgraded at all in order to do this quest. You go in, and you go for the Path for Odd Shard Hunting. That's gonna get you some shards of different colors. And I still have the berry, of, uh, the Poke Bean effects, I should say, um, to speed up. It takes 24 hours. If you use the full effect of Poke Bean, it'll take you 12 hours, so you can do this at most twice a day. So I recommend that you do that. You're gonna get a few shards um, w with each run. And what the shards do, if you get 30 of one color, you can go into the Festival Plaza and trade them in for bottle caps. So I'm going to show you 
I have collected, I think I put them into free space. Okay, I currently have three bottle caps and one gold bottle cap. And here are the shards. There's red, blue, yellow, and green, just like Gen 1. I have 73 red shards, 60 blue shards, 89 yellow shards, and 67 green shards. So as you can see, I can get two bottle caps for each of these colors that I have, because I have more than 30. I can almost get three from these yellow shards. And I'm going to show you the way to do that. Now, I'm also going to go into the Festival Plaza to show you the other way that you can get bottle caps. So, once your Festival Plaza reaches level 8, you will be able to, let's use an example, you will be able to talk to, you know, passers-by and have this option. Do you know any good facilities? And what you're going to look for is someone who has this facility right here. And it's called Treasure Hunt 2. It has two stars there. The Lotto Shop. And uh, I believe I already used this today. And they only seem to be open during the daytime anyway. I'm still a little sketchy on what time these things are open. But anyway, there is a little exploit you can do. Where if you find someone who has this lottery shop, Treasure Hunt 2, you can VIP them. Which means that you can call on them at any time, even if they're not connected to the internet. Or even if they're not passing by your place normally. And you can recommend their facility. You can go to the recommended facility. You can add it. And then you can go and find someone else. Swap out that facility for someone else. And then swap it back. The reason being, the first time you use Treasure Hunt 2 after you install it, you will always, always, always get the whatever, I think it's the number two prize, which is a bottle cap. Every single time you install or reinstall Treasure Hunt 2, you will get a bottle cap. And I would show you how this works. However, the downside to this method is that it requires festival coins, and I believe it requires 150 every time you want to install this one, plus however much it costs to install the other facility that you're swapping out. I think the least it could charge is 50. But anyway, at least from my experience, I only have something like, I don't know if I even have 300 festival coins right now. For me, it's really slow to rack up my festival coins. Um, so this is something that is easily abused, but it's kind of, it's kind of uh, balanced out by the fact that you have to get festival coins. But basically, if I had enough festival coins, what I would show you here is I'd have this lottery shop I'd find another person and swap it out for a different facility. And then I'd go back to the person who has the, the treasure hunt to swap it back in, go in, get my bottle cap, and then swap it out and swap it back in again and get the bottle cap. And it goes on so on and so forth. But you can only do this as long as you have enough festival coins. So in the meantime, we're going to just leave here. So that's what you can do there. That is, you know, it is... A fairly easy exploit, but you do, again, have to rack up the festival coins for that. So it's not exactly, it's not exactly an OP way to get coins. So I'm gonna talk to this person because, speaking of festival coins, I got two right there. I've collected 412 in total, but I'm pretty sure I only have something like 200 right now. Alright, so, when we, when you have the shards, returning to the shards here, we're gonna go over here and exchange our shards for bottle caps now. I am interested in bottle caps. 30 colored shards, for sure. Let me trade you 30 red shards for one bottle cap. So I should be able to get six bottle caps total from this with all the ones that I have, with all the shards that I have. We can trade 30 more red shards. And we get this two bottle caps. Yes, I want to trade again. We're going to trade in 30 blue shards. This is the third bottle cap. And we're going to trade again. And get bottle cap number four. And, uh, was that number four? No. Yeah, three. Oh, so, right, there's going to be eight bottle caps we can get. Sorry about that. I forgot there's four colored shards. So this is number five, and this is number six. And we're going to do our last colored shard, which is green. Bottle cap number seven. And bottle cap number eight. So I definitely recommend the shard method. It does take some days to get things going with that. It is pretty slow, but I find it the most reliable thing you can do because you can always have it running while your game's running. You just, twice a day, if you're, if you're really like 
good about every 12 hours starting a new expedition. You'll have, I mean, it's, it's random how many shards you get and of which colors, so it does take a while. But it's not so bad, especially considering how often I actually get a Pokemon to level 100. It's not that often. So in the meantime, you can try to breed for perfects and things like that. So that's what I did, though. I just, over the course of several, several days, a couple weeks, or even a month, I just racked up all the shards that I could. So that got me, you can see, I got a pretty nice store of bottle caps. Considering um, that I pretty much only need to use bottle caps on... Pokemon that you can't breed, and maybe the occasional really stubborn Pokemon I just can't breed a perfect of, you really, it balances out. You, I would not recommend hyper training super duper often, again, only with those Pokemon that you can't breed, or if you're just fed up and you're like, okay, this is as close to perfect as I can get, I just want to train that one stat that I'm missing. Anyway, we're going to go to Melly Melly Island now, and this is where the actual hyper training can happen now. I'm gonna go over here to Holy City Shopping District. We're gonna go ahead and head off to the mall, that place that is kind of cool, but to me, kind of underutilized. But we can do a couple of cool things there, and the thing pertinent to this video is that we can hypertrain there. So we're gonna go over. We're in the shopping district, gonna go into the mall. We're gonna go up the steps. By the way, it's talking about grinding Pokemon to level 100, the Battle Buffet is a pretty good once a day way to level up your Pokemon. And if you attach an amulet coin to your Pokemon that you're using to battle with, you can also rack up some money as well. Anyway, I believe it is this guy. We need to find someone who finds value in bottle caps. But fortunately, James from Team Rocket is here. Um, he's gotten a tan and he's gotten a lot older and balder since we last saw him. But it must be James because who else values bottle caps this much? All right, you want to try hyper training Pokemon stats. Let's go ahead and start with our Tapu Lele because we only have one stat that we need to raise. So let's watch how this happens here. Will it be a bottle cap or a gold bottle cap? I'm going to use my one bottle cap because I, I'm going to save that gold bottle cap for when something really, really needs it. Like something, like maybe a gold bottle cap would be awesome. Like say you found a shiny and it's the right nature and the right ability that you want, but it's just got no IVs, or like one IV. It doesn't have the IVs you need. That would be where a gold bottle cap comes in really handy. Anyway, it shows us the stats that we can raise, and obviously the there's a little like checkbox, little option bubble next to the ones that aren't perfect. All these other stats are perfect. So defense is what we want to raise. We don't need to, we don't even care about attack, so we might as well not waste a bottle cap on it. I'm going to select defense. We're going to take a look. Look at um, Tapu Lele's defense stat. We're going to see what kind of difference this makes. Tapu Lele already had pretty good defense IVs, but we're going to see what um, what her defense stat goes to when it's perfect. So, 178 defense. Let's see what it ends up as. Hyper training begin. Okay, Lulu is even stronger thanks to my hyper training. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. 186. So that was, what, an eight point difference? Now, the one thing that I have not checked for sure is whether IVs are one to one with stats. I don't believe they are. Well, maybe they are at level 100 now that I think about it, but that is something I've not looked up. But you can see that made a pretty significant difference. Eight points in a stat is pretty good at level 100, so that's a good little boost there. We're gonna go ahead and move on to poor Tapu Bulu because he needs three stats raised. So let's go back. We're gonna boost Pokemon stats. Holy cow. And it will be a bottle cap. We have 10 of them now, so we're gonna go ahead and use one on all three. Alright, defense, special defense, and speed. So look, if we look, we have 245 defense, 221 special defense, and 187 speed. Actually, let me write this one down because I have a feeling Tapu Bulu is going to get a bigger difference in stats um, because his were just decent. So let's see. 245 defense, 221 special defense, 
and 187 speed. 221, 245. There, my pen finally started writing. 187. Okay. Now, so we have reference, because that's three numbers to remember. Okay, let's go ahead and get this thing hypertrained. Holy cow! Okay. Nope, we're good. Alright, so let's check out Holy Cow's stats. Alright, went from 245 defense to 266 defense. So that is a 21 point difference. That is pretty good. It must have had something like 10 IVs in defense. It went from 187 speed to 209. That would be an 18, no, a 22 point difference. And from 221 special defense to 226 special defense, a modest 5 point increase, but pretty good still. Okay guys, so now you know how hyper training works, what you need to do it, and how to do it. Um, hopefully you understood what I was saying there with that festival plaza exploit. Now if you have a really good and easy way to farm festival coins, you can let me know. For me it's been pretty slow going, so I just like the sort of passive way of doing the Pokepelago. Um, but there's a few methods for you to try out there. And Let's go ahead, we can see, hyper-trained, and hyper-trained. Still missing that attack, but not really necessary. Okay guys, so that does it. Now you can see, we have pretty much all of the ingredients for getting your team battle ready. So, probably one of the next things we would need to talk about is team building. I myself find that to be one of my weaker points, but what I might do is... If we do a team building episode, I'll go over one of my teams and just sort of talk about the logic behind it. Not to say that I have a fantastic team, but take one of my teams and analyze its strengths and weaknesses, what purpose each Pokemon has. Obviously, there is no one perfect team. Every Pokemon has a counter, every move has a counter, So, and Pokemon has at least as much luck as skill involved. So, it's a learning process for everybody, it's a little bit hit or miss for everybody. So. As much as I'm not an expert on team building, we can maybe do a little talk about that, and maybe that would help me out as well. Anyway, other than that, leave your suggestions for other topics you'd like to see covered on How To Competitive. I hope this was a helpful hyper training guide for you guys. If there's anything I missed, be sure to let me know, and maybe I can cover it if there's enough to go on for another video. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like, comment, as I said before, give, give me suggestions. Also, subscribe if you haven't already, if you'd like to stay up to date on when my latest videos come out. Also, check out some of my other series as well, because I think you might like them. Also, if you would like to follow me on social media, like my page on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, the links are in the description. As well as, follow me on Twitch and join my Discord server, because... I'm, I go live, sometimes, with viewer battles and Pokemon giveaways, with 3 plus perfect IV Pokemon, and sometimes Pokerust Pokemon, I know some people are looking for those. That'll about do it, I guess. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you on the next episode of Pokemon Sun and Moon How-To Competitive.